Redeemer lives. When I read the New Testament, I'm struck by the way the writers exalt Jesus. Of course, the Bible is God's Word. 2 Timothy 3.16 mentions that all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God, it meaning it is the breath of God. It comes from God's mouth. So ultimately, God is exalting Jesus within the pages of Scripture. I think of what Paul wrote, for example, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 through 17. Paul wrote this. He says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has enabled me, because he's counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man, but I obtained mercy, because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. However, for this reason I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm also reminded of the words that Peter wrote by inspiration in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21 through 20, 25, as we think about exalting Christ. And Peter wrote to those Christians, and he said this, For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he committed himself to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Also, as we think about biblical writers who exalt Christ, also remember what John wrote in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7-11, through 11, when he said, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested, or it was demonstrated, shown to us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. He was the sacrifice for us. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Now what stands out in these passages is what God has done for us through Jesus Christ, even though we deserved none of it. Paul Peter and John all emphasized that none of us deserve the love, the mercy, the long-suffering of God. Sin separates us from God and earns us our fair wage, which is death, Romans 3, verse 23. But the gracious, merciful gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The writers of the New Testament exalt Jesus for this demonstration of love over and over again. What about you and me? Do we see ourselves as we would be, truly be, without Jesus Christ? If we do, then our praise and honor of the Son of God ought to be unending in this life and in the next. As we see a scene in Revelation 5, 11 through 14, the host of heaven praising the Lion of Judah, the Lamb of God, for what he has done. Without him, we would be nothing. Without him, we could do nothing. 
Without him, we would be lost and hopeless. I'm reminded of what Jeremiah wrote in Lamentations 3, verse 22 through 24. He says, Though the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. I appreciate you watching and listening to another episode of Centered on Christ. Centered on Christ is emailed as an article five days a week. Click the link in the description if you want to start receiving Centered on Christ to help with your daily Bible study.